If you have kids or grandkids in your life, you're gonna love this week's project. We're making a convertible floor cushion. So this week's project is a little out of our norm, but I think you're really going to love it. So my kiddos are always having friends over and, you know, piling up in the living room watching movies or reading books. And so I wanted to design this floor cushion after I saw one that my friend Audra made for her daughter. Um, so I put my own little tweaks on it and I'm excited to share it with you. So really what you need for this project is two and a quarter yards of some canvas or heavy duty fabric that is 60 inches wide by the width of fabric. So your standard quilting cottons are not quite wide enough, but we do carry some beautiful canvas here at Missouri Star. I'm using this Geo Florals by Rosa V Designs for Paintbrush Studios, and it's just gorgeous. And they have a few different colorways of this uh, Geo Florals that you can check out. So the reason that we did this is because we need that 60 inch width to go around our pillows. So the idea here is we all have those old bed pillows that you know, aren't really comfy to sleep on anymore, but we can repurpose those and use them for this convertible floor cushion so that if you have, you know, friends over, they can have a little pallet on the floor or just be cozy and comfy hanging out in the den or watching a movie. So it's really quick and easy. Uh, what you're gonna do to start with is we're, I've already cut this down to 60 by 70. So remember it's 60 inches wide on our width. And so I did a running cut of 70 inches. So let's open this all up. You can see this beautiful print. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it so that my selvages are together here because I'm only going to trim off this one side of selvage. You can absolutely trim both if you want, but you'll notice on this side, the print goes all the way to the edge and that selvage is gonna prevent it from fraying. Since this whole edge is gonna be inside of my project, I'm just saving myself time. You absolutely could trim it and hem it the way I'm going to on this side if you prefer it, but I just wanted to let you know what I did and why I decided to do that. So let's go ahead and line this all up on this selvage edge. I folded it in half once. And then I'm gonna come back and fold it again just to make it easier for me to cut. So I just wanna make sure it's laying nice and smooth. and We don't have any like tucks or weirdness happening in there because we do want this cut to be nice and straight. So just take your time to line it all up. See, I've got this piece sliding under there. And when you're working with larger fabrics, it just takes a little bit of maneuvering. That's just part of it. Let me see here. That's better. Perfect. Now this is laying the way I want. I've got this all nice and straight. So we can make sure we get that entire selvage edge. This one little piece at the bottom is wanting to slip on me and we don't want that to happen. So just like I said, take your time. All right. So now that my selvage edge is all lined up, I'm going to make sure that this is straight across my mat. I just don't want to accidentally cut this crooked and that looks good to me. Just like that. So I have my five by 24 inch ruler. If you have a six by 24 inch ruler, you just need a nice long ruler since we're working with this wider width. And so I am going to go ahead and just cut off my selvage here, just like so. Now that is out of the way. So then now I have trimmed that up and we are going to take, and we are going to turn this and press it twice. So I'll fold it down about a half an inch and a half an inch again, and we're going to hem this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the ironing board over here. The trickiest part of this project is just working with the large piece of fabric. Besides that, every bit of this is so simple and it's skills that we're all familiar with. So I'm just going to get this started and I'm going to turn under 
about a half an inch. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it under again. I'm gonna press this really good here at the top. There we go. So when I did mine, I pressed it really well at the beginning and then I started stitching under my machine really close to the, the edge of that uh, fold, not out here on the end. I didn't want this to be flapping around. So just about, oh, an eighth an inch from the bottom of my hem that I've turned under. So just about an eighth of an inch from that folded edge. I'm gonna take a few stitches and I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch. And then I am just gonna start sewing down that side. And maybe this was just my own laziness or I don't know, I just like things to be quick. I just finger pressed and folded as I went on once I got that first little hem started. So I just zoom a little way down, stop again, make sure I've got about a half inch fold and it's all staying lined up and keep sewing. And I'm just gonna continue this all the way down this side. Remember, if you cut the selvage off of both sides, you'll wanna do the same thing on both of your long pieces. All right, we are all the way to the bottom edge of this. You can see it's worked perfect to just fold and finger press a little bit as I go. So I'm just gonna finish up this last little bit. There we go. And now I am gonna go ahead and press this edge just cause I want it to lay really flat. And since I didn't press it to begin with, I'm gonna come back with my iron and just make it nice and crisp, which is much faster than turning every little edge and pressing. Although you will have a beautiful result either way. There we go. Just like so. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have that all done, we are going to take this over here to my big table. When I did this first, I actually laid it all out on the floor so that I could have it all spread out. But this table's a nice size, so I think I can show you how to do it on a tabletop as well. So we want our two, our hemmed edges are gonna be one towards us and one away from us. And we are gonna start by folding over the edge that's closest to us. We're gonna fold that up. And I'm actually gonna slide this down. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And so you can see I'm just keeping this edge all lined up because we've cut it all straight and we don't want it to get wonky on us. So then we're gonna go ahead and fold this over. Okay, so now I have this overlapped. This is my nice hemmed edge. I am actually gonna pull this down so that it lines up exactly with the measurements on my mat. So my bottom edge is right at the zero line. My top edge is right at 24. And when I do that, my hemmed edge that I made ends up at the five on my cutting mat. So I actually want this folded width, this overlap that I'm creating to be 27 inches. And since it's technically folded in half, I'm making this tube, my fabric is doubling up. So this is only 24. I need it to be 27, which means I actually need to move this six inches up. So if I take my hem and I go from the five and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, I actually need to move this overlap up to the 11 just like so. And I'll lay this again so my edge is nice and straight. And now I'm gonna put a pin in a couple of places here to hold this in place. And we are gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam and we're gonna repeat the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so I've got those pins. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
pin right through that fold and making sure this edge stays nice and straight. I'm gonna put another one at both ends because I don't want this straight edge to slip on me. So I have got that pinned in place. Now I can flip it around and do the same thing. Working in the other direction since the fold will now be going away from me. We're gonna line up our edge there at the top. Slide this down so I can see my numbers. You can see why I did this on the floor the first time. <laughs> it just gives you a little bit more working room. But if it's not easy for you to get down on the floor, I wanted you to see that it is totally possible to do this on your table. So there we go, that's all lined up, our 24. Remember we need to move this down six inches. It's at 19, which means it needs to come down to 13. Just like so. And I'll put a pin in there through all of my layers. Keeping our edges straight. Okay, so now many of you might be saying, Misty, you have the right sides out. You're folding this wrong. I promise you, this is on purpose. We are going to be doing some French seams today on these ends because if I know one thing about kids, it's that they're hard on things. And so if I'm making something with kids in mind, I want it to be super washable and durable. So if you have never made a French seam before, Today is your day. This is the easiest way to do it because we're just doing two long straight seams. So let me, I'm gonna put the bulk of this because this is heavy. Remember we're using canvas. I'm gonna put it up on the table so it's not pulling against my needle. And we are just gonna sew with our, the right sides of our fabric out like we have here. We're gonna sew a quarter inch seam, just like our standard quilting seam. And we are gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch just a little bit over that junction, just because that's you know where this overlap is, that's where most of the tension is gonna be on this project as we put the pillows in and out. stitching again. There's that side. Now we'll flip this around and do the same thing on the other side. Remember our first seam is just a quarter inch seam. Make sure we don't have any other layers tucked under there. Again, over that overlap. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and pull those pins out. Put them back in here. We will need them again in a little while. Oops. Grab the ones on this side. And now we're gonna flip this so that it's wrong sides out. Oh, actually first, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these little corners just to take a, away some bulk. It's amazing what a difference that little bit of fabric makes, but it really does. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this and I've got nails so it'll help me poke those corners out. And we're gonna do that down here as well, make sure that corner turns out nice and sharp. There we go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end. And we're gonna turn that one out as well. 
poke our corners through. Just like so. Make sure I'm getting that turned. All right, I think that looks really nice. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna roll this edge and make sure it's pressed nice and flat and we don't have any extra tucks or anything happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the pressing mat here. I'm just gonna kind of put my fingers in here and then get this to lay down because we want a nice clean edge here. We don't want this to be uneven. So I'm just rolling this between my fingers until I, I know I'm at the edge of the seam. And once I'm there, then I'll press this with the iron. So same idea. And I'm just gonna continue rolling the fabric as I work my way down. When you get to uh, where that overlap is, there is just a little bit more bulk that you're working with. So you wanna be even more aware of that at that point. This one little spot does not want to slide out. There we go, now I got it. See, sometimes you just have to make it behave. There we go, much better. Now that I got through that tricky part, the rest of this is going just great. There we go. Almost to the edge here. You know what, I don't like how that one's laying, so I'm gonna poke that out just a little bit more before I press it. That looks better. And again, rolling it between my fingers and hitting that with the iron. All right, so now I think you've figured out how I've pressed that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side and then I'll meet you back here and we'll finish up our French seams. All right, we've got both sides pressed so it's nice and crisp. And so now we have that quarter inch seam that's tucked inside here and we have our right sides of our fabric all together. And so now on either end, the next step is to take either, I like to go ahead and just make this seam really wide. So you could do you know, a three eighths, a half inch. I just like to give myself extra room. So I'm taking a five eighths inch seam. And this is for two reasons. One, I think that extra width is just gonna add extra strength to this project and we have the room. So I like that. And two, by making sure that it's, you know, even wider and I'm not just too close to that quarter inch seam that's tucked inside, I run rest less risk, sorry, I couldn't get that out. I run less risk of having a uh, little frays poking through my final seam. So I want this to turn out really nice. So I have a 5 8 inch line on my machine and we are just gonna go ahead and back stitch at the beginning. And we are gonna zoom down. I am gonna watch when I get to this overlap because I wanna back stitch at that point both um, on the side I can see and the side that I can feel inside, just to give it lots of strength. I'm gonna move some of this bulk up here so I'm not fighting against my machine with it. And just make sure everything is laying smoothly. There we go, that's better. Continue on. Here's that first little seam. I'm gonna backstitch a good amount there a couple times. And make sure this is laying nicely. And down here, I can feel the other seam. So I'm just gonna kinda keep my fingers here so I can remember that when I get close to here, I'm gonna backstitch again. And that's just adding more strength to those tension points of this project. all the way down to the end and backstitch. There we go. I went ahead and already took care of that on the other side. So you see how that works out. Let's trim these threads. And now we can turn this right sides out again. And we have this beautiful edge, no raw seams anywhere because we did a beautiful French seam. 
So now we're going to go ahead and flip it back to right sides out, press it good on both ends just like we did before, and then we'll put some measurements for our pillow slots. All right, so we have both of these edges uh, pressed now and turned, and I just wanna show you how clean and nice that looks. And again, it encloses all of our raw edges within that fringe seam, so we don't have any surprises jumping out at us, which is what we want. It makes it super durable. So I've gone ahead and I have this folded in half now, lengthwise, and I'm gonna go ahead and press this center line. And so let's take this back over to the ironing board and we're just gonna put a, a press line in here. And this press line is gonna represent our first line of stitches. So I really wanna be able to see it. Make sure this side is all square, looks good. Honestly, the trickiest thing about a project like it, this is just the bulk of the fabric and managing it so that you don't end up with surprises that you're not looking for but you just have to take your time and it works great. So now we've pressed that. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm gonna take this back over to our big working table so I have some more room. And we are just gonna make sure this is all laying nicely the way that we want it. We don't have any tucks. And if it's all straight, that's exactly what will happen. Perfect, that looks beautiful. And so now I am just going to double check everything. Feel with your fingers and see if you feel any like strange lumpy spots. You just don't want that. It's always worth it to be extra careful. And so I'm gonna go ahead now and pin a couple places just to hold my overlap in place because I don't want this to shift on me. I want this to stay even all the way down. If you're worried about it, you can lay your ruler on here. This is a 25 inch ruler. There's my finger. So this might be still a little wide. Let me double check my ends here because I was estimating. So I wanna make sure that it's, no, we're good. This is perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead again, put my pin back in the middle. Just like so. I'm gonna put another couple across here just so that it lowers our risk of shifting. This is one of those projects where pins really are your friend. So doing the same thing down here making sure this is all behaving. Just gonna keep sliding so I know that this is laying the way that I want it to. Lovely, this looks great. Okay, couple more pins. Voila, all right. So now I'm gonna move back to where I drew that or pressed that center line. So I am going to now take my ruler. Just wanna make sure I don't have anything weird happening. There we go. That feels better to me. My ruler is lost underneath my fabric. And I'm gonna line this up right square with the other edge, the bottom edge of this, the long edge, since that should be straight. And I'm gonna take my chalk pencil and find a color that will hopefully show up here for you guys. Let's go with yellow and see how that does. And I am gonna draw a line all the way down here. And then once I do that, I'm just gonna slide this up, keeping it straight on that line and straight with this top edge. And I'll continue that mark all the way across. Now, hopefully, I don't know if you guys can see it. I can see this yellow really well. So I'm just gonna put a few more pins here just because I don't want it to shift. And when I go to pick this up, it could happen. 
So we're just gonna do everything we can to stop that from happening. So then now I have that. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find the middle between that center line that we drew and this outside edge. And so you can fold it, you can measure it if you have a mat big enough, but it looks like right here is my middle. So I just took my, my end and I folded it to my center line. I'm gonna put a pin right there in the middle where that meets. And now I can open this back up and slide it down. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before to draw my next stitch line. So again, line my ruler up right here at the bottom, pull that pin out now that I know I'm where I need to be. Draw my line. Oop. <laughs> where did that go? I don't know. Draw my line. Slide my ruler up so that it is square with the top edge. Continue all the way off and put a few pins in it to hold it in place. There we go. Now we move this and we'll do the same thing from the other end. Just a little bit of maneuvering here. And now we're gonna fold this up to the center just like we did before. That looks great. Make sure I'm all the way there. Put a pin in this bottom edge. This is our, our center mark. Move this, this pin might not be quite right. It's giving me a little bubble there. That looks better. There we go. Now we'll take our ruler and mark our last stitch line here. If you're worried about this being crooked, remember there's a couple places you can check to make sure that your lines are staying square. So I've got it lined up along the bottom edge, that seam line from our um, hem, our hemmed edge there, I've got that lined up as well. So don't be afraid, it will work out just fine. Go ahead and pull that pin. And this step is pretty forgiving. After all, we're gonna stuff these with pillows and they're pretty moldable, so you don't need to fret too much. So we're just gonna slide this up, making sure we're staying straight. And fin Whoops, I keep breaking my chalk and finishing that mark just like so. There we go, put a pin in there. You're gonna be really glad you took the time to put all these pins in, but just don't poke yourself. <laughs> I say that from experience, unfortunately, but what are you gonna do? And one more up here. All right, now that we have this all marked and pinned, we are just going to take these over to the machine, move this out of my way. I'm gonna keep the bulk of this up here on my table, so again, it's not pulling against my needle and making it harder on myself. And we are gonna slide this into the throat of the machine. And I'm gonna sew right on those lines that I marked, back stitching at the beginning and the end. First one is all done. Move over to the center line now. I'm just kind of rolling up the bulk of this under the throat of my machine um, so it's out of my way. And I don't have to worry about sewing through layers that I don't want to sew through.
go. And now, since I have this other end, I'm gonna flip it around just to keep less bulk under the machine. Find my mark. Oops, looks like I came unthreaded at some point. Fix that really quick. There we go. And now we'll do this last line of stitching. One thing I forgot to mention to you earlier is I, you do want to backstitch again over your, your seam, that overlap spot, just to add some strength. So when you get there, make sure you backstitch. We go. So our sew lines to make our pillow sections are all in place. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of my pins out now so that I don't poke myself. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way. And you can see how our, we've got like four individual pillowcases now that are all sewn together is essentially what we've got going on here. So now we'll just pull these pins out. And then all that's left is I wanted to add a, a couple of straps to close this up so that it made it a little bit more compact for storage. So let's move this out of the way for now. It looks great. And you can see all of these little pockets are exactly like we want them. So up next, we are gonna cut two two and a half inch strips from our width of fabric. So I have those here, nice long two and a half inch strips. So remember this is our 60 inch wide fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my selvages off. So that's done. And now I am just going to fold this right sides together. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew over one end so that it's closed. We're just gonna make a tube here. So I'm gonna sew over this narrow end here. There we go. Okay, and so now we can just sew with our quarter inch seam all the way down this long seam to make a tube. All right. We made our giant tube here, it's ready to go. And so now all I need to do is turn this right sides out. This is a pretty narrow one. And so I thought I would show you guys my favorite trick. I have like these old metal knitting needles. I don't use them to knit anymore, but they're still hanging around in my craft room. And so if you have one like this, it's just a little bit longer than like a chopstick or the end of a wooden spoon. And for a tube that is this narrow and this long, they work just perfect. And so I like to use my fingers and kind of get this started, pinch the end a little bit, and then I poke the, the pokey side of my needle through there, and we just start feeding this down over the needle, and you can see it works really well. Now, if you're worried about poking through your seam or anything like that, you could totally use the blunt end, but then you have to push against the pointy end. So for me, I just try to push gently and go this direction and I just work it down and we're just going to do that and I'll meet you back here once I have turned this and pressed it and we'll do a little bit of top stitching. All right, this one is all pressed and turned. You can see I have this little open end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tuck that in because we don't want those raw edges hanging around. So we're just gonna make sure it's flipped in at least a quarter inch. There we go. And now I'm gonna top stitch over that edge. Beautiful, and it's all enclosed. If you wanted, you could totally stop at that point. That is absolutely enough. Your tube is done and secure. 
I really wanted this to look really nice and professional, so I did go ahead and add just a top stitch edge to both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's just about an eighth of an inch in. And we're just gonna zoom down the side and back up the other. There's one side done. Now we'll go back and do the exact same thing on the other side. We go all done so remember you need two of these straps I have the other one all ready to go so now let's go ahead and figure out where they need to be placed on our project so what we are doing we have our pocket side face up and we are going to be working right on that center seam that we made so I'm going to take my straps and I want to make sure they're not twisted I'm going to fold it in half long ways, just like so. And I kind of just like to sit them folded in half so that when I'm ready to place them, they're already ready to go. So I'm gonna do that with both of these. Oops, that one's twisted. We don't want that. So I'll turn that right. And I'm kind of just pressing it with my finger and those are now ready. So now I can take my pens again and my ruler and I wanna measure up from the bottom edge of my project six inches. So you can see I've got the six inch mark of my ruler. And so now this strap needs to slide down to there. Now that I know that's where it wants to be, I can open it up. I can still see my finger press line. And I'm just gonna put a couple pins on either side of this. So it's out of the way of where I wanna stitch, but it holds this secure. So another one on this side. And we're gonna stitch right in line with that big seam that we made earlier. And we're gonna back stitch over it a few times just to really strengthen those straps. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Measure down six inches from the top. There we go. Now I can see my center line goes right there. Put a couple pins in place to hold this. And now we can take this to the machine and tack our straps in place. So let's tuck this underneath here. I have this all lined up. And remember, I'm gonna back stitch over this a few times just because we really want it to be strong. There we go, that first one is done. You can see it's right in line with that first line of stitching that we did. So let's slide this down and take care of strap number two. Making sure my needle's lined up with that stitch line and then back stitching across there a few times. There we go. Beautiful. Now we can take those pins out and all that is left at this point is to grab four pillows 
and slide them into the pockets. So like I said, you could use leftover bed pillows that you have that you're ready to replace because maybe they're not comfy for your head, but they're perfect if you're gonna be throwing this cushion on the floor. Or if you're buying new ones, there's cheap ones available at you know, any big box store, but I do recommend you get uh, a little bit more firm. I found when I was testing this out, the firmer the pillow, the better the result. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy cozying up and watching movies and playing games with the kiddos in your lives. And until next time, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.